Earlier on, KTN's Rwanda correspondent had a sit-down with Rwanda's trademark East Africa country director, Patience Mutesi, and discussed, among other issues, trade in Rwanda and Rwanda's role in accelerating the ongoing ESC integration progress or the process in his part of that interview. We're looking at those five aspects, and among them, we looked at the the impact of the electronic single window. We we looked at the impact of the the work that we're doing with the Rwanda Standards Board and the impact of the work we're doing with the um, export development. Mm -hmm. So in that report, we found that for, from the four key projects that they looked at, the work in trademark was able to induce trade of up to $100 million. Um, what that means to the common trader is that the, the, the interventions that uh, Trademark East Africa is doing actually benefits the end consumer and producer. So for example, if we talk about the work with the one-stop border post, it means that it's very easy for both an importer and an exporter to get their goods into Rwanda, but also out of Rwanda, because they're spending less time at the borders. If you looked at uh, the recent uh, World, uh, World Bank uh, Ease of Doing Business report, you, you notice that the, the ease of moving across borders reduced. The rating of, um, of uh, Rwanda actually improved from 131 to 87. What that means is that with the work that we're doing, with the interventions that we're doing, it's actually easier for a trader to move across borders. So to answer your questions on what it means for an end con consumer, one, if a transporter or a trader is actually to, is, uh, able to get his goods easier from Mombasa or Dar es Salaam to Rwanda, the actual benefits should not be to the transporter, but to the end consumer. So if it was, it, it was costing you in 2011, which the report shows, $6,500 to move a, a standard container from Mombasa to Kigali, and you're now, you're now getting it at $4,800. The actual benefit should not be absorbed by you as the businessman. That means that myself or yourself as the end consumer should be able to pay less for a commodity that's imported. Um, if you're able, if, if you're an exporter, that's an example of an importer. If you're an exporter and you're able to move your goods from Rwanda to Mombasa, in it used to take, uh, I think, 30 days. It used to take about 30 days. It's now taking about uh, five days. Mm -hmm. Or seven days. Uh, what that means is that you're able to get your goods out of Rwanda much faster to the end consumer and it saves you both time and money. Right. And in the end, the, benef the, the beneficiary is the business person. Mm -hmm. So it, it, in all the interventions that we, 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 we have in Rwanda, I could give endless ex examples. The actual benefit is to the trader and the end consumer. End consumer. Right. right. So how then do we translate uh, these particular findings mm -hmm. um, of, of, of the you know ease of doing business mm -hmm. into you know uh, fruits like more intra-regional trade right. more trade internationally or globally mm -hmm. how do we do that okay I will start with region re regionally and I like to give examples if if uh, I give for example uh, the work that we're doing with the Rwanda Standards Board part of the of our work is into standards harmonization what we had in the past is that a Rwandan business had different standards that they had to to measure up, to measure tests, up yes. compared to their colleagues within the region through our work and we still have a long way to go we want to harmonize these standards if you have the same standards in all the East African countries, what that means essentially is that a Rwandan good can be equally competitive in Kenya, can be as competitive in, in Tanzania and in all the East African countries. So it gives the end consumer also a variety because uh, you know that if, if I'm going to go out and buy a yogurt, the standards are going to be uniform across the board regardless of the market where it's coming from. Right. If I take you back to the first question, mm -hmm. Andy, you said that this is actually going to transform, in fact, even tying it to the second question, which mm -hmm. you just answered right now, that it ties into increasing of trade. Mm -hmm. But when you hear your name, Trademark East Africa, right. and facilitating regional integration, mm -hmm. you know, and, and boosting trade, 
Um, some people might wonder and, 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 and say, how far can you go as right. trademark East Africa right. to help ease of trade within the region mm. when they look at situations like what we saw in Burundi, cutting down, mm. uh, you know, exports and imports, banning them literally, yeah. uh, you know, within between Rwanda and Burundi. Right. How far can you go to help facilitate traders yeah. who end up suffering yeah. as a result of this particular impasse? Uh, that, that's a good point. And I think it, 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 just before this, the, the, the one of our members actually gave a good point to say that trademark work is facilitation. Mm -hmm. We cannot really get into the political space, and that's not our mandate. Mm -hmm. But that said, um, there's a lot of work that we can do, and a lot of it has been on advo advocacy. So we do a lot of advocacy with the governments. We work very closely with the private sector to increase their capacity, because it's one thing lobbying and having all these policies that favor the private sector, but then having a private sector that does not have the capacity. Mm -hmm.